Good evening, everyone. Welcome to One of Fugitives, your Crime Stopper show. So glad that you could join us. Uh, we've had a phenomenal month of March, starting out in April with an uh, even better <laughs> start. Um, we do appreciate and want to thank everyone for all the tips that you provide to Crime Stoppers. And again, the following fugitives wouldn't have been arrested without your help. Welcome back, everybody. Well, again, for those out there that have always wanted to provide tips on any wanted fugitives or any criminal activity but weren't sure how to do that, I'm going to tell you the three easy ways to contact Crime Stoppers. Remember, Crime Stoppers is 100% anonymous. That means you're never asked your name and you never have to appear in court. The most common, of course, is to call our 24 hour a day call center at 433 STOP or 433 7867. Our second most favorite uh, way to provide tips to Crime Stoppers, because of course I can communicate with you and also you can provide pictures or video, is to go straight to www.p3tips.com. Now that is also available for any iOS or Android devices in your app store. You can upload P3 tips and that way you can communicate. Basically it provides you a way to text your tip into Crime Stoppers. And finally you can go to the GulfCoastCrimeStoppers.org website. In the right hand corner of that page of, cor of course you're going to want to click on uh, submit a tip and it will walk you through the process. The two main most important things that uh, when you provide a tip to Crime Stoppers that you need to keep in mind is you want to keep your password and you want to keep your tip ID and that way um, even even if you call into the call center you can go online or you can contact the call center give them that tip number if you have access to online you can use your password to see your status of your tips. Reward information is also provided Provided online through P3 and it's just a great program. I mean we literally we uh, our stats speak for themselves but we literally provide up to three thousand dollars worth of rewards a month and that goes without saying that all of our rewards depending on the crime depending on uh, the charges of course the computer estimates those but they could go anywhere to up to three thousand dollars in cash five thousand dollars for cold case uh, three thousand for homicide information so it's very important that you keep those two numbers because this is definitely a worthwhile program and Amber and I are constantly um, saying you know crime doesn't pay but we do and legitimately Crime Stoppers does do that. All right, with that being said, we're going to go ahead and get started with this week's one of fugitives. Remember, these fugitives are wanted as of April the 2nd, 2019. We do ask that if you recognize anyone that is advertised on Crime Stoppers that you don't make contact yourself, you either contact the Sheriff's Office or the Pensacola Police Department um, and let them know that, hey, you're a tipster. You've provided a tip to Crime Stoppers, but the fugitive is there now. Um, don't contact dispatch first and then call Crime Stoppers if you're interested in a reward. That's the main thing that you want to remember. You have to get that tip number in first. And with that being said, we're going to go ahead and get started. This week's first wanted fugitive is Cordarius Bargainer. Cordarius is wanted for grand theft with a bond of $250. And he has a very low bond for grand theft, but in fact, uh, Cordarius has been wanted and has an active warrant for that. Our next wanted fugitive is Darius 
Bedgood. Darius is 33 years old and he's also wanted for grand theft with a bond of $10,000. And a lot of people are always asking me, how can that happen? Same charge, but different bond amount. Well, a lot is taken into consideration when a person is charged with a criminal offense, and it could mean that they have more than one count. Also, the value of the, the, the items take, taken increases and will affect the bond amount as well. So just keep that in mind. Um, our next one of fugitive is Stephen William Bittner. Stephen is 48 years old, and again, uh, he's also wanted for grand theft, and Stephen has a bond of $1,000. So again, you know, those bond amounts are constantly being um, weighed as far as the property taken and its value, how many counts, and so on and so forth. Our next one of fugitive is Bob Mitchell Boone. Bob is 48 years old. He is also wanted for grand theft, but also dealing in stolen property. And he has a bond of $2,000. Our next wanted fugitive is Kiasia Clay. She's 21 years old and she's wanted for burglary. And Kiesha has no bond at all. And a lot of times for any of you that don't know what that means, when a person is not given a bond, it is totally up to the judge, but that means that they have to actually go to their first appearance or their first court date if they bonded out of jail and the, the judge will weigh the charge then and assess a bond if one is applicable. Our next one of fugitive is Stephen Douglas Dumas. He's 31 years old. Stephen is wanted for robbery obstructing justice, and on those two charges, he has a bond of $22,500. But Stephen also has a separate violation of probation charge, which automatically carries no bond. So before he is allowed to get uh, a bond or allowed to bond out on the robbery and obstruction charge, he will have to see the judge first. Our next one of fugitive is John Worthington Ellis III. John is 23. He has a violation of probation charge, which carries, of course, a no bond, and he also has a failure to appear, so he doesn't get a bond on both counts. And that is John Worthington Ellis. Next one of fugitive is Batarius and Tane Isaac. And I apologize, Batarius, if I have uh, pronounced your name wrong. Um, he is 29 years old. He's wanted for vehicle theft, and he has a bond of $2,500. Our next one of fugitive is Hannah Rose MacArthur. Hannah is 20 years old and she's wanted for a failure to appear, and she has no bond. We've said this time and time again, if you do have a court appearance, make sure you go to it. Um, that failure to appear alone carries a mandatory 30-day sentence. It's just not worth it. It's a lot easier just to go to your court date, um, show up, and, and kind of get that process moving along. Chances are you'll get a bond or, uh, you know, you get started on your sentence. I don't know where you're at as far as the judicial process, but it's better to go ahead and make that court date. Our next one of fugitive is Alasia Lynche McPherson. Alasia is 31 years old. She is one of her grand theft and fraud, and she has a bond of $2,500. Our next one of fugitive is Charles Fitzgerald Noble. Charles is 32 years old and he has also wanted for grand theft and he has a bond of $200. Our next one of fugitive is Joseph Connor Riley. Joseph is 33 years old and he's wanted for criminal mischief, damaging property, and he has a no bond. And our next one of fugitive is Harley Milton. Riordan Milliken, he's 40 years old, and he has a failure to appear with a no bond. Our next one of fugitive is Joseph John Tomorrow. He's 20 years old, 
He's wanted for burglary, and he has a bond of $2,500. And lastly, our last one of fugitive is Nathan James Taylor, and he is 28 years old. He has a violation of probation charge and also a failure to appear. So Nathan does not get a bond and he will have to go before the judge to uh, see if he is eligible to receive a bond on either one of those charges. But before he even gets a bond, he's gonna have to do that 30 days on that failure to appear. So it's like I said, it's better to just show up, uh, meet your court appearance and um, follow the judge's rules because, you know, one thing leads to another. Before we go to the break, while we're on break, please go to Gulf Coast Crime Stoppers Facebook page, like us, invite your friends to like us. Also go to the Escambia County Sheriff's Office Facebook page as well as the Pensacola Police Department. A lot of good information, constantly updating it with uh, information or events going on in the community and also uh, things that you just need to be aware of, safety tips, all kinds of good information and there are some community events that are coming up that we'll talk about in the second half and a um, lot of a lot of really good information so be sure now that you have time to go ahead and click like and be inviting your friends and we'll be right back <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. Well, we're going to go ahead and start the second segment. Remember, uh, these deadbeat parents are wanted as as of April the 2nd, 2019. The great thing about Crime Stoppers is it applies to deadbeat parents as well. So if you recognize any of these deadbeat parents, please call Crime Stoppers. Again, that number is 433-STOP or 433-7867. You can give us or give Crime Stoppers the location. They're still going to give you that tip number and password. You keep both of those. And I do know that the deadbeat parents, if they are just arrested solely for that civil commit, it's a flat $150. That's not bad for a potentially one minute phone call to make 150 bucks. So it's definitely worthwhile. And any type of offense, whether it be a civil commit or a criminal offense, either apply. So we don't discriminate at Crime Stoppers. If you have a pending civil commit, we want them picked up as well. And again, uh, just because they are civil commits and it's not an actual criminal charge, we still ask that you don't make any contact with any of these deadbeat parents. No one wants to technically go to jail. And so we don't want anyone out there putting themselves in danger or uh, running the risk of one of these uh, people being confrontational with you. So please keep that in mind. With that being said, our first deadbeat parent, of course, is Carlos Cruz. Carlos is 45 years old and he has a purge of mount of $466. Y'all take a good look. Somebody out there knows who Carlos is or knows his children and probably want to earn a $150 reward. I know I would if I knew him. I'd tell Crime Stoppers where he was. Our next deadbeat parent is Artavian Jenkins. Uh, Artavian has a purge amount of $920. And look at that disposition on his face. Does he look happy? Absolutely not. And that's the reason why we ask that you don't make contact with anyone that is being featured on one of fugitives, whether it be a criminal offender or a deadbeat parent. Our next one of fugitives, I'm sorry, our next deadbeat parent is Antonio Kidd. Antonio is 41 years old and he has a purge amount of $570. So if anybody knows where Antonio is, call Crime Stoppers. Our next deadbeat parent is Jacomois Wesley Love. Well, that's an interesting name. Uh, 34 years old, and he has a purge amount of $570. Mr. Love needs to show some love and catch his child support up. But if uh, anybody knows where he can be located, you call Crime Stoppers and, and give him a help, a uh, helping hand. Um, give us a tip of where his location is, and he'll never know it was you because we're 100% anonymous. And I'm sure that uh, his children would appreciate that. 
Our next deadbeat parent is Michael A. Politz. I'm not sure uh, if I'm pronouncing that correctly or not. He's 39 years old and he has a purge amount of $1,070. And that is uh, pretty high. We do understand that things do happen beyond your control or you could lose employment or be injured, be laid off, what have you. But if you make the call to family court and address the judge and let him know about your uh, financial circumstances, that's a heck of a lot better than just letting that arrearage uh, you know, get larger and larger. Our next deadbeat parent is James Goft. James is 39 years old and he has two separate cases with a purge amount totaling $1,890. One of his cases is $1,070 and the second case of course is $820 and usually what that means is that is when maybe you've been divorced and you've had children with another person but you have two individual cases there and you can accrue an arrearage on both of them. And when it gets to a certain amount, then you have an active civil commit warrant against you. Our next deadbeat parent is Sean A. Gunter. He's 30 years old and he has a purge amount of $1,070. So if anybody out there, Sean's a young guy, so I bet he's got lots of friends. Sean won't know if you call Crime Stoppers if you know where he's at and give him the address. You're going to get a $150 um, reward for it and Sean's uh, children will appreciate um, that extra $1,070 purge amount he owes. Our next deadbeat parent is James Haley II. James is 46 years old and he has a purge amount and I've been doing one of fugitives now for four years and this is by far the largest purge I've ever had to announce, $10,000 $10,070. So, you know, again, this this has gotten way out of hand. I don't know what James's situation is, but clearly has not contacted family law and advised them of any major changes. And this is an egregious amount. And so um, if anybody knows where James is at, we do want you to contact Crime Stoppers and let us know. It's, it's time that, you know, he goes before the judge and explains that outrageous amount that he owes. Our next deadbeat parent is John Haneke. He is 35 years old and he has a purge amount of $570. And our final deadbeat parent of this segment is Candace Hansen. Candace is 41 years old and she owes a purge amount of $820. And that just goes to show that, um, you know, your responsibility as a parent doesn't discriminate. It could be male or female. Um, if you are uh, court ordered to pay child support for the responsibility and care of your children, um, male or female, it doesn't matter. Um, and clearly, you know, that's a responsibility that you should take should want to take seriously. But if you know, again, the location of any of our deadbeat parents, please contact Crime Stoppers. Again, that number is 433-7867. If you can't remember that last four, just remember 433-STOP. And it's just that easy. And the deadbeat parent rewards, again, um, start at $150. But if they do um, or have a pending criminal offense, you know, that could, that, it could, that could also increase that reward. So with that being said, those are your one of fugitives and your deadbeat parents for the week of April the 2nd. Um, posted on the screen are just several um, of our events that are coming up. We have Coffee with a Cop. That's really, really popular. That starts April the 17th. That's uh, from 9 a.m. to 10.30 p.m. AM. I apologize, we don't stay there all day uh, at Barnes and Nobles. I would, but um, I'm pretty sure that at some point they're going to need just regular customers and we take up a lot of their uh, cafe space. But the address at that location is 1200 Airport Boulevard. That is a really popular event. That's where everybody can come. We have deputies there um, when available. The chief stops by, uh, just different members of our agency stop by, and, and we're there to speak with the public if you have any questions 
questions or just curious about uh, anything that, that's going on in your neighborhood and you want to talk to a cop personally, it's there. And, and the great thing about Barnes & Nobles is we're there at their cafe. You can have a cup of coffee with us. Um, they have really good coffee and just sit and, and interact with us. And we do take that very seriously. We do want to constantly build uh, bridges within our community because we do care. Uh, we are very dependent as law enforcement officers on interaction with our citizens. Um, you are our eyes and ears. You see everything that we don't. And so y'all are a wealth of information and we definitely enjoy interacting, um, bringing more positivity to our community. And again, our stats are, are proof that you guys are hard at work. Y'all are paying attention. There is not a day that doesn't go by where Amber or myself are not out in the public and you recognize us from the will of fugitives. And it's that type of interaction that just makes us both so proud. Of course, we want to make our boss proud, Sheriff Morgan. So uh, we definitely want to have good results for him. And with your help, we are, we're succeeding. We're actually winning. So we do appreciate that. Um, our next event, of course, is National Prescription Drug Take Back Day. That is on April the 27th. That's from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. And it's basically at six local Walgreens. Um, you can get the specific addresses for those Walgreens location at our uh, Facebook page at Official ECSO, and that's the Escambia County Crime Stoppers page. I mean, not Crime Stoppers, but Escambia County Sheriff's Office Facebook page that I asked for everyone to like while on break, so I hope you did that. Um, our next Neighborhood Watch Academy, of course, starts May 21st. This class fills up fast, folks, but it is one of the most interesting and most popular academies that we have at the Sheriff's Office. You can sign up online at escambiaso.com. Also, um, for those uh, interested, safety in place of worship, Safety in the Place of Worship. Again, that is a phenomenal um, course. It really gives you good uh, tips on how to protect your church um, and your church members. And that event starts on May the 28th. And again, you can sign up online at escambiaso.com as well. Um, and we're not going to forget about our Citizens Law Enforcement Academy that starts July the 11th. And again, that is a 10 week long course. Everybody loves that course. You get a certificate, you get fed every single Thursday th uh, during that event. But those that are interested can also sign up at escambiaso.com and that pretty much takes up your months for April and May. There's lots to do, lots of interaction with ECSO. We invite everyone and urge everyone to sign up, those who are interested, and we look forward to it. I hope you all have a very safe week. Remember, um, pay attention to Will of Fugitives and watch our show, and we will see you back next week. Have a good one.